Hey everyone, so today we're going to go over how to make a metal heart background. We're going to go over three different methods, which is the fractal method, the brushing method, and the multilayer method. In my experience, the fractal method is usually the quickest, so we're going to go over that first, and then we'll go on to the brushing method and the multilayer method. As for software, you're going to need a fractal program, a photo editing program, and optionally a 3D program so something like Cinema 4D or Blender. As for the Fractal programs, you can use JWildfire, which is free and open source, or if you like a little bit more convenience, you can use Chaotica. And for the Photo Editor, you can use Photoshop, you can use Affinity, really whichever one suits your workflow. Alright, now that you've downloaded your Fractal program, it's time to make a background. This tutorial in no way fully encompasses absolutely everything that you can do with JWildfire and Chaotica. These are very powerful softwares, there's, there's probably a million options in these, but I'm going to go over what's absolutely necessary to get a pretty good result. When you open Wildfire, it automatically generates three fractals for you, and you can generate more by hitting the random match button in the top left. Sometimes you'll get happy accidents like I just did. Uh, I, th I actually think that this background looks pretty pretty good on its own, but I'm going to show my favorite algorithm that I feel gives better results. So not to go too deep into the weeds of everything, whenever you generate something on JWildfire, by default, it chooses different flames. There's different types of flames and there's different types of algorithms that you can generate with, but I'm going to showcase what I feel to be the best algorithm. So I typically choose Bubbles 3D in this pop-up menu. This is the flame generator, and I'm also going to choose two colors. Now, having it be two-tone makes it a lot easier to post-process in the future. So we're going to randomize. So now, as you can see, this is generating flames that are only in the Bubbles 3D category, and they're only two colors. And already I'm seeing a few good results just by generating this right here. So at the very bottom we have this. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, we have this one. I think this one is really good. Okay. So... Okay. So one quick way to actually alter what you have is to go into the camera settings on the bottom left. You can change the field of view. So I'm going to change the field of view to be really wide. You can change the yaw, which sort of changes how it spins. The bank, which is sort of the direction. And you can get really interesting results with this. I, th I honestly think that this right here is actually pretty good on its own. Alright, I actually think that that's pretty good already, so I'm going to render this out. Uh, on the top right, you can choose the rendering options. And so we're going to do 1080p and I'm going to do high quality. I'm going to name it Tutorial Fractal. You can see the progress of the fractal render right here. So whenever J Wildfire is done rendering, it will actually pop up its own window like this. But don't worry, you don't have to save the image again. It is actually already where you saved it. So this is what my fractal looks like. I think this doesn't need much post-processing, so I think we can move on to the brushing technique and the multi-layer technique. Okay, so here's the brushing method. The goal of this method is to get really soft and atmospheric fog, which can be layered on top of and below 3D models. We're going to start with a black background, and we're going to create a transparent pixel layer above that black background. Uh, I'm currently using Affinity Photo, but this can absolutely be done on Photoshop or GIMP or any any real photo editing software that has brushes. So I'm going to hit B so I can get a brush. And the absolute first thing that we're going to do is turn down the flow and the hardness of that brush. By default, brushes are far too harsh. And for what we're going for, which is really nice, subtle atmosphere, it's going to look way too jagged. We're going to choose a slightly desaturated color. I'm going to go for blue. And we're going to start painting.
A good tip to increase depth is to use the eraser in areas that you feel would best accent the fog that we're making. Also, don't forget to adjust the hardness and flow. Alright, so I think we ended up with a pretty good result. I'm now going to duplicate the brushing that we've done. I'm going to rotate it. And now I'm going to use a blend mode. Really, we're just trying to choose whichever one we feel looks best. I think add works best in this context. We can change the opacity, which will change the intensity of it. Now the fun part begins. We're going to use the eraser brush on that new layer. And now we're going to selectively choose where we want the added blend mode to go. Alright, so now that we have a pretty good result, I'm going to get a curves modifier. And this will allow us to greatly change how it looks. It's also pretty good to play around with the brightness and contrast. Yeah, I think that looks great. So now that we have the brush method done, you can actually add in your own 3D models now and layer them in as you would. So typically I'll use some sort of blend mode to incorporate it better. I suppose that looks pretty good. The absolute best way to get that really atmospheric feeling is to use the eraser on your 3D models. Alright, so that's the brushing method done, and now I'm going to head on to the multi-layer method. Alright, so this is the multi-layer method. It's possibly the funnest way to get a really unique background, and it's really only possible once you've made a few assets from the previous two methods. We're essentially going to mash a bunch of assets together. Think about gradients, fractals, brushes, and 3D models. It's also the most subjective method, so definitely feel free to create something completely abstract and random. I'm going to switch it up by using a light background with a gradient applied. I'm also going to add in our previous assets. You can download these in the description if you'd like to go along with me. Alright, so now that we have our assets layered together, uh, the thing that I'm going to do first is change the blend modes of each thing. As you can see right off the bat, this is actually looking really nice, so I'm going to go ahead and use a curves adjustment just to dial that in really quick. That looks really nice. I'm also going to add in a few 3D models. Uh, you can learn how to make them from my previous tutorials. Uh, they will all be linked in the description. So I'm just going to add in these real quick. I would say the main goal with using the multi-layer method is to create something extremely abstract. So lots of blend modes, lots of layers, throw absolutely everything at the wall.
I'm gonna add in some more layers. Ooh, I quite like how that looks right there. There's a lot of conflicting colors going on right now. I have one tip that can help with that. I'm going to put a blank white rectangle on top. I'm gonna to change it to blue. And I'm going to use the hue blend mode. Now it looks much more consistent. It's all in the blue hue. We can also make it green, we can make it red. Really up to you. I'm gonna to go to the previous project and grab the actual pixel layer and paste that on top. This is what that looks like. That is making it a lot more vibrant. Ooh. The way the divide looks, I really like how that looks. Although, I don't like how that is clipping right there, so I'm going to erase some of that. There we go. All right, I think that this is a pretty good result, actually. So, what you would do now is you would layer on more adjustments. Maybe you, maybe you would adjust the, the brightness and the contrast. So this, this already is looking very ethereal, very abstract. Now, essentially, what you would do is you would take your 3D model renders, you would layer them on top, or you would layer them in between some of these layers, use different blend modes, use different opacity settings, all of this combined while you're erasing parts of the 3D model, that's gonna get you very nice results, especially since you can see the actual object moving in and out of the foreground. All right, well, thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you'd like to support me further, you can visit my website, surrealutopia.com, or my Patreon page.